Hello, welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a homeschooling mum of three in the UK. The first thing I wanted to do was um, answer a couple of questions that some of you had had and one of them was are we year round homeschoolers? Um, yes is the main answer but it's a tad more, it's a bit more wordy than that. So yes we are year round homeschoolers but we do take a couple of breaks but not like schools take breaks so they're not they are always at the same time, but they're not really, we don't stop all home ed. Um, so what we do is we just kind of tow, like um, do less. So for example, from Yule, which is around the 21st of December, um, just, to, just before then, until the 10th of January, which is just a couple of days after Charles's birthday, we will do less. So we won't do any workbook in that time, any anything like that. Um, and we will just do nature study and then on our project days we'll just do like Christmas crafts and birthday cooking and stuff like that we just really do less <laughs> just do less and it's mainly a break for me as well because in that time I'm organizing Yule and Christmas and seeing friends and then I've got Bessie's birthday at the beginning of January and then we've got sorry ding, and then we've got Charles's birthday and then we have a two and a half week break and then it's Albert's birthday so it's just a really busy time and I don't want to be sitting down coaxing people through stuff so we just don't do very much then and then we also take a couple of days off here and then for different sabbats as well as a big long week in the at the end of september when um we have maybon which lasts almost a week and then the day after maybon ends it's my birthday so we have like nine days i think Aww. it's just got interrupted by albert and had to come and get get the fill to come and get him. So, so yeah we take that time off in September and then we take a bit of time off in May to kind of switch from winter to summer curriculum. Stuff like that. Yeah so and obviously we have sick days and things like that so but to be fair the amount of stuff if we don't do anything Monday to Thursday and then we did it all on Friday it would still be fine because we don't we because we spread it out all year round it's not a big deal. Uh, the other question that I was asked was do I ever feel like I'm not capable of homeschooling them? Yes! All the time. Especially when people go, are you sure you're capable of homeschooling them? Um, because I've had that to people like, oh, what makes you think you're capable of homeschooling them? And I'm like, well, if the school system works, why am I not capable of teaching them all the stuff that I know, that I was taught? So, yeah, I get wobbles all the time. I am, am I doing too much? Oh my. It's a mind fluff. Um, so, you know, it's completely normal to wobble. It's completely normal to feel like you're not capable. And I'd be worried if you didn't feel like that. But feel free to pop me a message when you do feel like that. Because I'm here for you. And I can be for you what I have other home educators done for me, which are, don't worry, it's okay. I had a wobble the other day and this happened. and it's all fine. Um, the other thing, it was a really cute question actually, um, what do I enjoy learning about? I enjoy learning about horses and I'm really disappointed that my children don't enjoy it like I do. I'm like, isn't it so interesting? And they're like, no. no. I like learning about nature, anything about nature, it doesn't bother me what it is. It could be gross, it could be amazing, it could be fantastic, it could be boring, I don't care. And I love learning about history, any kind of history, specifically how the common man lived but also the monarchy, I'm really interested in the history of the monarchy as well. I mean, our children are called Charles, Elizabeth and Albert. Um, the other question was not a home educated related question, home education related question, that's a lot of words all in one sentence, um, but I will answer it now. Um, so this question was, when do I think is a good age to introduce children to horses properly? I love talking about horses so much. Um, the best time is when they want to be introduced to horses. The gr a great time would be four to six is when I would suggest. Um, mainly because most running schools don't take them until they're four anyway. And Bessie, who is six, nearly seven, is only just getting into it now and actually feeling like she can do stuff. So um, yeah, I would say that four to six is a really good idea. The older the better. Um, and I would also be very picky about how you introduce them. So for example, pick pick a good riding school 
t do taster lessons, do, do pony rides, like little things like that. And if they're still begging to go back, then keep going like if you go to and there's a farm not too far away from us that does pony rides on the weekend that's a great thing loads of places activity farms have that get them doing that get a season pass for that place and like pay three quid to give them a pony ride every weekend and if after like six months they're still like i want to ride the pony i want to love the pony then maybe go and get riding lessons and stuff because it's a lot even just if you're just riding in a riding school if you buy your own stuff hat boots joppers etc like it's still hats are like 50 quid I mean, you can get cheaper ones, but, you know, they're better if you pay, like, 50 quid. Jodhpurs, brand new, 20, 25 quid. Boots, similar price. That's, like, £100. Pounds. Um, it's a really expensive layout for a hobby that might only last a week. Um, so, yeah. Basically, four to six after you've done a couple of pony rides and stuff like that. Or, if you're in the New Forest, hit me up. You can come and see my ponies. There we go. Um... That was all the questions and answers. So we're gonna go to the main bit now, which was a big question that I'm doing, this, basing this whole video on. I believe it was a lady called Jessica who commented, hi, um, and asked about my eclectic approach to homeschooling and like what, how it's eclectic and what my approach is. So, and I was really excited to do this. So I printed it all out and the link's in the description. <laughs> you can go and check out my Google Docs and you can see all of the things I wrote. Um, I am just going to briefly discuss them with you rather than read the whole thing because you can read it for yourself in your own time. So the first thing I did a couple of years ago now was do one of the quizzes <laughs> that's in the description, you guessed it. And I did one of them most recently because it's new, but the other one I did years ago. And I then researched the ones it suggested that I might like. And of course, being an eclectic homeschooler, I wasn't more of one. I was kind of three, um, which is really, really common. So the first one is Reggio. So the bits that we take from Reggio, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that probably right. I'm not, I'm not eh, but I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right or not. So I'm just going to say Reggio. Um, is project based learning. Now, Wednesdays are project days, not during the summer, we just do what we want during the summer, but um, October to May have Wednesday project days. And this is where that comes from. Um, so they have a project, project based learning, they're encouraged to collaborate with each other, collaborate with other adults, um, and everything is multi subject. So for example, we might do volcanoes one week. Um, but volcanoes is not just geography, it's science, because we might make one out of bicarbonate of soda and vinegar. It's art, because we might make one out of paper mache and paint. <laughs> it's maths, because I might get them to calculate how long it takes from the volcano exploding to it to get to the bottom, that kind of thing. Um, I might get them to write about volcanoes, English, and so on. Then I'm ticking all of the boxes in my brain, and they're having a nice time. Ta -da! Um, it's also a really multi-sensory thing like I get I try and have something that's like really gets them to use all their senses so something they can touch something they can eat something they can see something they can hear so on um, and on that communication through the arts that's another regio point that I really really am passionate about um, and drama music painting sculpting crafting and so on writing um, regio believes that children are born with a hundred languages and they express them through the arts um, I'm really really into that I'm really into creative expression and I think that it's really really healing I recently did a course over lockdown I didn't manage to finish it because again ADHD but I was really inspired by the message from the course and um, it was by a really really good friend of mine her name is Adiola and uh, check out her Instagram Adiola Moonsong um, she's amazing she's really encouraging and just really kind of hit the spot with me and that was something that like when did we stop creating as adults when did we stop being creative if you're not like an artist by profession then you know quite a few of us aren't that creative anymore when did we stop coloring when did we stop making stuff with play-doh like because when did we stop feeling like that was okay and that was a really really big thing to me i was just like oh my god it's totally okay for me to play with play-doh i can make play-doh just for me and i could sit and play with play-doh if i wanted to or i could just paint my numbers that is really really easy it doesn't matter i could just knit a scarf that's like a hundred miles long it doesn't matter as long as I'm creating something and that's actually inspired me to create these videos for you because I'm creating something that I enjoy creating this lighting is really starting to annoy me I'm really sorry if it's annoying you as well 
Um, anyway, off on a tangent. So the other thing is about having an inviting and comfortable space to learn. Like it doesn't really matter if it's, you know, got all of these colourful posters on the wall or it has, you know, child hype art or anything like that. But it, they just have to feel comfortable in it and they have to feel like they're invited into that space as they are. They also need to have a space where they can make a mess and you're not going to yell at them. Which is, like, trust me, it's really hard, isn't it? And you're like, I just cleaned the lounge, now there's Play-Doh and paint everywhere. But the kids need to have a space where that's okay, even if it's the garden. We have done that. We have artwork on our fence because that was that was a place where I was like, I can deal with that. That's a comfortable and inviting space for you to play in. And you can craft and you can create and you can draw on stuff with chalk and you can paint everything as long as it's not alive. Like not my plants and not bugs. Paint the trampoline, paint the plastic chair, paint the wall, paint the fence, paint the patio. I don't care because it all comes off in the rain. Like I literally just went, go for it. And lockdown has been, the garden has been their domain in lockdown. They've really enjoyed it though. So it's fine. Um, so the space all being like, as I said, just child led and yeah. Anyway, so um, learning experiences, obviously at the moment, learning experiences are pretty hard to come by out of the house. Field trips, unless they're socially distanced, they're not happening. Um, but it's, it's things like that. It doesn't have to be a field trip though, it could be a trip to the library and then you just read every book they hand you. Sounds like my idea of hell, but I'd do it anyway. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is like just having learning experiences within your local community. If you've got a local community centre, once they're back open and it's safe to go to them, go and chat to the elderly people using it if they want to chat with you. Elderly, elderly people are really interesting. Go and chat. Go and see if you can volunteer at a day centre once a month and chat to the people there who have learning disabilities. They're really interesting people too. And your, ch your children are gonna get loads out about it. Loads, you know, loads out it. Even if they're just taking around biscuits on a tray or, I don't know, learning to play bridge from an old, old woman. Like, you know, anything like that. It's a learning experience, they can be free and they can have a really good, they can just get relationships with other people that might not be out of, might not be in their usual circle of their friends and family. There we go. Um, and then finally, Reggio is documenting your child's learning. I'm really bad at this. So flipping bad, it's unreal, but I try, and that's the important thing. Um, encouraging them to keep a journal, an educational journal specifically, but also a personal journal. Um, trying to keep an educational journal for them to track their progress, being like, oh, look, they read, le even if it's just like a couple of sentences a day, they read level one today, and then three weeks later, they're like, ah, they read level three, they're up to level three. Like, just to show that progression. Um, one, because then the child can look back when they're older and go like, oh yeah, look, I remember, when, do you remember when I did that? It was so cool. But also, if you ever get any local authorities going, me, 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 at you, you can be like, look, this is the progression. Even if you're unschoolers, you've still got that, this is what they've been doing. We did here, we went here, we watched this, we did that kind of thing. Um, so moving on from Reggio is Charlotte Mason and I love Charlotte Mason and I found out something really amazing about three years ago at Phil's grandma's funeral that she was really into Charlotte Mason too and I was like why didn't I know this when you were alive? We could have had chats. It's really a bit sad but also exciting because I was like yes Charlotte Mason is cool. Um, again we don't take loads from it, I don't prescribe to the whole thing um, but there are some bits on here that I'm really really into. So the first thing is um, good habits that will last your child a whole, their whole life. Taking care of themselves, taking care of the home, taking care of others. It's really important life skills. The other thing is short lessons. And I am so behind this. One, because I don't want to sit for an hour doing the same thing over and over again. My brain can't handle it. I struggle to film these some days and I'm like, this is 15 minutes. <laughs> um, so the short lessons are really, really good. 15, 20 minutes for the kids. Maybe a bit old, maybe when they're a bit older, a bit longer, but no more, no more than like half an hour. The other thing that I really love about Charlotte Mason is nature study. And on Fridays, Fridays is nature study day. That's something we're gonna be starting in September, so a little bit earlier, we won't start that um, after Samhain, like we would the other stuff. Um, we'll be starting that in September, probably like next week, probably like the first of September, so. But I am gonna take you along with me for that. So the, the nature outside as much as possible, keeping a detailed nature journal and using guidebooks to discover and identify nature by themselves and with you, all good. Um, and then the other thing is no grades, like so I don't, it's a ticker across. Good, could do better, acceptable, unacceptable. 
kind of thing. Um, and if it's not up to the standard that I know they can do, then we just have a really gentle conversation about what happened. Like, were you really distracted? Are you tired? Are you hungry? Okay, what can we do next time to make this better? Like, I don't make them redo it or anything like that, which that's a Charlotte Mason thing, is that they just like, redo it until they do it again, until they get it right, which I'm not really into that. Um, so I would, for example, the other day, Bess was doing some letter work and was writing the letters S and T and she rushed the lowercase letters and they just looked like a schmush. So I said to her, right, I want you to get me a piece of paper and a pen and I would like you to me I'd like you to write five S's and five T's neatly and then that's it. We're done. And she was like <laughs> oh okay then and eventually she agreed and that was it and I was like oh yeah you proved to me you can do an estimity there we go tick done just because it's not it's either they don't understand it or there's something else going wrong there's something else going on that means that they can't focus on that right now um especially with my children so it's never they're not, they're not doing it because they're like I hate you you're a rubbish teacher you know they're not doing it for that reason they're doing it for their own reason and you need to work out what that is um moving on Wardorf I didn't like Wardorf when I first um, did the research on it because I was like, really fluffy bunny. I do like the little dollies that they have in their faces though. I think that's nice because then it doesn't assume gender and it doesn't assume emotions, doesn't assume character. Like you can just do whatever you want with it. I like that. Um, so the biggest thing that I have taken from Wardorf for this kids homeschooling is time for free play when they're young no formal academics until they're six or seven depending on the emotional maturity of the child child started at six and a half going on seven bessie is just starting now at six and a half going on seven um albert i think will start earlier i think he'll probably be more like six and it might be hard to keep him like waiting until he's six um because he's almost four and he's already like i want to do it i want to do it but i'm really quite picky about that like I think I will give him preschool work to do if he wants to do it um or stuff to do like a worksheet that he has to colour in or something like that that's your homeschool um so he feels like he's involved but not actually giving him anything to do like letter recognition number recognition potentially but like nothing not going to be teaching him to read or anything like that until he's older because I just feel like he just needs that time you don't get that back you don't get that time back when they're just little and they can just play and they're oh they're just so cute you don't get that back and i think that they should just have be little as long as possible um so screen use is limited that's another one and i try i'm not very good at this and if you know me in real life i can hear you laughing like i've seen your kids with tablets yes yes you have i try I try. It is limited. They don't get free reign on it. We don't radical on school and stuff like that. They have timers on it. They have to do their homeschool. They have to do their chores before they get to go on it. And so on. Unless it's like the time of the month where I'm like, ah, I want a nap. Like that's when they can have free reign on it. But that's very rare. It's once a month, right? So the other thing is with Wardorf I like is the encouragement of learning a modern foreign language at the moment uh, we're going to be doing French which is exciting because we'd really like to be able to go to France tomorrow tomorrow <laughs> next year <laughs> I haven't had any coffee today <sighs> um we'd really like to go to France next year <laughs> really like to go to France next year I'm not gonna edit this out and I think it's really important we've also done a bit of Spanish before when we went to Mallorca last year it was just like I love the kids were like hola como estas to like random people like yeah I taught my kids some Spanish <laughs> it was really good um but also practical activities like cooking and cleaning like if they when kids learn life skills they feel more com they're confident they feel more confident they're more capable helpers they can help themselves and that's a big thing is helping them to help themselves you know, the whole teach a man to fish, you know, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, teach a man to fish, he'll eat for the rest of his life kind of situation. Right, the other thing is arts and crafts heavily encouraged, and I don't really need to encourage them to do arts and crafts because they just do it all the time. Um, but short projects are preferred. The ones that, gives, that give them, not instant gratification, but by the end of the day, they're like, I've accomplished something. I feel pride now. Um, that kind of thing. It's also really good for their fine motor skills. So, you know, sticking pasta on a piece of paper might seem like a waste of time it's so good so good for fine motor skills and if they haven't got good fine motor skills they're not going to be able to write 
So the other thing is rhythm and routines, and I think I might have talked about this in a, in a, a, a video before. Um, we focus on rhythm rather than routine, so their bedtime might not be seven, it might be nine, but they still have the same bedtime rhythm before they go to sleep to help sleep cues. We still have dinner time between this time and this time, that sort of thing. Um, weeks again as well, when we're not in lockdown, obviously we're not really in lockdown anymore, but like when we're in term time, we have a rhythm to the week. And then because of the sabbats, we have rhythm to the seasons as well, so that's handy. Um, so the final thing that we have taken a bit from is Montessori. And I'm not hugely into Montessori, except the one thing which has encouraged them to be independent. And I don't mean self-soothing or weaning or anything like that, because if you've seen any of my Instagram posts, you know that I am a passionate continuum concept parent. The link below, again. I am also a natural term breastfeeder, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, I'm thirsty. Okay, there's the tap. You can reach the cups because they're in a place where you can reach them. There's a stool in the kitchen. You know that the blue one is the cold tap. Get yourself a drink. Or I will provide a jug of water. There's the cup with your name on. There's a jug of water. I don't need to, I don't need to do anything here. Um, might seem a bit lazy, but it's not my job to wait on them hand and foot and it's not my job to entertain them. It's my job to parent them and it's my job to educate them. Keep them safe. So if they can make their own food and drink safely, then they should. If same like putting socks and shoes on, stuff like that. It's just it's just all these independent skills that they're gonna need to learn at some point. You might as well learn them now. Um so that's wrapping up the video. I'm a bit hyper today, so I'm mis I'm hoping I made you giggle on some of these points, just in case you're wondering what's going on. ADHD I haven't had a lot of exercise recently, so I've just kind of got it all built up inside me. Uh so I need to go for a long dog walk or something to kind of just run off some steam. Uh, but I'm really, I'm really, really glad that you asked these questions. If you've got any other questions that you're like, oh, I'm really interested in this, can you do another video on that or whatever? Or you want me to expand on any of the styles of homeschooling or anything like that, pop me a message and I will add it to the plan. I have pretty much everything planned out, all of my videos planned out until January, but I'm always happy to do a bonus video um, and do another one for you. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, uh, makes my day when I get a little notification saying I've got a new subscriber, I get, I do a happy dance. Um, thanks so much for coming by and we will see you soon, bye!